Today, we're going to have a long overdue conversation about game pieces while we do a box battle between these 2021-2020 sets and say which one has more value. So the conversation about game pieces today, let me get my knife here, oh, get me, get my knife, get my knife, is why is it that magic is so valuable yet nobody grades it? And why does everybody get so mad about, you know, the game piece army? And even why, like, you know, at the same time, collectors really consider themselves players first. So I have the answers to much of these things today, in my opinion. I'm going to leave the comment section um, intentionally silent because I, w I want folks to kind of, like, feel free to comment how they feel about this conversation today. And I want to do a box opening for you guys because, you know, if you want to put this on in the car or something like that, but or if you want to watch and see the box opening rather than, than my face. So, I'm going to start by saying first, if there's little, I forgot there's two box toppers here. If there's little demand for cards of little value, then there will be little demand for cards of great value. So, Magic's an ecosystem. You know, there's a multi-million dollar industry built around Magic the Gathering. And... You know, if you think about it, just like any tool or tech out there in the world, there's there's industries built around it. Even this is an industry. If you think about it, there's there's money to be had in buying and selling the cards. So, if you hold a Magic the Gathering card, technically, you hold a share of stock of the company. All right, we're gonna take a break here while we flip this first game piece over. Ready to see this first game piece? Boom! Black Cleave Cliffs. Well, now, well, well, that's not the that's not the game piece we, we wanted to see today, but that's all right. That's all right. It's like a six bucker or so. So, if you hold this card, you hold a share of stock. All right, and the stock, like a company stock, can go up or down, and the company can print more or issue more stock. And sometimes there's there's reasons for that that make a lot of sense. And sometimes it actually leads to the availability of more funds such that things can grow. That's a good good hit there. I need to have a good spot for my hits. Um, so that things can grow. Um, we're going to put that aside. Spore Web, Temper, Joe Real. Oh, Waker, Waker. And not too much there. We're going to do... Uh, expedition pack and collector booster over here so similarly if you reprint things a lot you're essentially tapping the market of money that is a value of these cards and issuing that value to new players or new buyers wooded foothills a very nice boom not a foil but it is a fetch so when they you know, do things like reprinting fetch lands and stuff like that. You're allowing folks to come into the game and buy in at a, at a lower price with the hopes that the economy grows. So it's a healthy thing. Uh, you know, reprinting is a necessary action, but obviously you can reprint too much. And, you know, on the flip side, if you don't reprint enough, the barriers to entry in Magic can be so great that people are like, you know what, I'm out. I, ca I can't do it thief um, we're gonna put these over here there we go island now we'll put the hits over there we're gonna put these hits over here there we go paragon mauling gerba oh world sculptor there we go there we go we got one we got one very nice very nice and the barriers to entry become too great and people end up not playing and what ends up happening is things become like incestuous and what I mean by incestuous is you have people leaving the game and not enough people coming in where you're selling your cards back and forth to each other just to like, you know, either increasing prices or decreasing prices, right? And because of this, it could end up causing the whole ecosystem to collapse. It's like a hot potato. Who's holding the potato last loses, right? But at the same point, beautiful Grim Tutor. Excellent game piece there. Speaking of game pieces... Um, Protege, Acolyte, Ooze, Acolyte, and an Uprising. So, there's, there's, you can't have one, one side. You can't not reprint anything 
because you're going to end up in a situation where everything costs a ton of money, nobody's going to play the game, and people are going to leave. And at the same time, you can't do the opposite, where you print everything too much, because nobody's going to care. Nobody's going to care. And if you take any other hobby out there, Awakening, okay, Smash, oh, oh, Smashing, Ox, Nectar Pond, oh, oh, these are, these are some good hits here. Pathway and a Soul Shatter. You know, if you take any other hobby, who expects to come in and like golf? I don't know, let's take golf, because I, I play some golf. Who expects in golf that you could enter and buy the top clubs at the cheapest possible price in the market and demand it? I mean, nobody, that's ridiculous. And who thinks that you can play with some of those top clubs as good as somebody that plays all the time? Because you can't. So, I, I, what, my, my point of the matter is I don't understand why in this particular hobby people expect to come in and, you know, unleash, that's a nice foil, unleash, and get things, wrong cat, at, you know, the, the prices that people who have been in the industry for many years get. It just, it doesn't make sense. Um, so... Uh, Tell me your thoughts. What do you what do you think? My point of what I'm saying is is that I think reprints are a healthy thing, and you have to have some reprints. You can't print too much, and obviously Wizards is tapping tapping the printing way too much. Um, no priest. Nice oblivion there. Insight. Pickaxe. Oh, another pathway. Nice foil lotus cobra. Obviously, they're tapping the printing too much, and I get that, right? But you can't not reprint things. I mean, I have folks that are interested in joining and getting started in the game. You know, they're not buying tons of expensive cards. They need to come in, you know, buy some cards of little value, build their decks, figure out how to play, and then start building, you know, decks and cards of value. So I really believe that one of the reasons, nice rata there, that nobody grades magic is because for the most part people are players first. Oh, nice cat dog, 15 bucker. People are players first and um, collectors second. So, you know, I have one friend who's like, you know, I'm gonna play with the most expensive cards that I buy. If I pull a $5,000 card, it's a game piece. I'm playing with it. And I think a lot of people are like that. And once you grade it, you can't use it. There's really no like, I mean, may maybe like a commander you could, but. Outside of that, you, you can't use it. Crawling Baron's really nice there. Ruin. Nice pathway. Another pathway. Ravager. So I think, like, it's a, actually a healthy sign that there's not a lot of people paying to grade cards because that means that they actually have use for them. And it's not just, like, this collector's piece that's a... Uh, I don't want to say a Ponzi scheme or by any means, but you know there's value to these cards outside of being cardboard. Um, whereas that's not the same in necessarily other card games and things that exist out there. Man, that was a that was a stinker. What am I doing with this? There we go. So let me know your thoughts. What do you guys think? I think I'm. You know, this is kind of the part two of the conversation of the skins from the last video, so I'll probably link in um, link in that video at the end, if, as long as I remember. Um, so you guys can check that out if you haven't. Haven't yet seen Relic Robber, Bailiff, Scute, Scute, Squad, Scute. So far, nothing like crazy. No Seagates, no Terrors, no Ugins. Um, but, you know, I think like in these last reprints, and we were talking about this in the chat in another one of the videos, in the last reprints on the Shocklands, things, things stabilized because A, the print run was low, and B, there was like a really high, like hidden demand for these things. Where, you know, see all my decks up there? You don't think that I got four Shocklands in each one of those? Or, well, you know, three, four, or whatever. But... I think a lot of people had a lot of decks that they wanted to put some shock lands in, and this was a good opportunity for them to buy in. And um, in this particular instance, um, 
I think we saw a lot of that happening. And what's gonna end up happening there is, is you think I'm ever gonna disassemble these decks? Do you ever disassemble your deck? Not really. So there's gonna be a lot of, um, we'll call stock, you know, taken off the table. Those things are gonna vanish because people, people are gonna have that stock within their decks. Scrambler, Mammoth, there's the Kazandu Mammoth with the O-Forming. Man, we're not really getting many good hits today. Speaking of game pieces, maybe I jinxed it by calling it a game piece. Um, but I think Wizards is trying to find the balance between how, how do you reprint or how do you make things free to play and free to enter, but then allow the ramping process for people to spend lots of money. Um, you know, on essentially the same thing. Temple, Nine Lives, Pilfer, Protégé, Chandra. Man, man, nothing. So, I forgot Zendikar had two box toppers. That's my thoughts on the game piece matter. I mean, like I said, you, they're both very, very necessary. You need your collectors, you need your game piecers for things to be successful. That's a hit there, boom. Uh, Soul of the Wild, that's a, that's a couple bucks there. Same with Crawling Baron, might be a couple bucks. Omnath, Nectar Pot, and Awakening. Okay, that was a pretty decent pack. Pick these up, um, I'm gonna start off a guy, I'm going to start offering some pack openings of um, blister packs of Throne of Eldraine and Ikoria. So if you guys are interested, I'm going to probably offer them on my website, philosopher.cards. So if you guys want to check that out, um, the spiteful, I wish that was more money than it was. Um, if you want to check that out, like I said, I think I'm going to start offering those at pretty reasonable prices. Um, when I say reasonable, like right at or right under market for Per pack on how much they cost so um, message if you're interested shoot me an email be like yeah I really want to do that um, throne that's not anything scourge another pathway okay oh boy we got a foil we got got a foil expedition coming in here um, we want to see that all the time but it's not the right one not the right one not the right one. But you need both. And it's like, you know, I know there's there's some personalities out there that get people ramped up on one side or the other and why they're right, but you really need... Oh, Ren and Sari. I haven't pulled that one in a while. Pursued Whale. Emancip oh, nice emancipation. Oh, this was this pack is a is a beast of a pack. Holy cow, holy cow! I don't even know where to start sleeving. Where do we where do we start sleeving on this one? Um, all these game pieces in this pack are worth like seventy bucks. There we go. Pursued whale. I don't need to sleeve that one. I'm not even sure what we're in and series doing, but um, we're gonna sleeve it up just in case. Then obviously fiery emancipation. Yeah, definitely want to sleeve that up. So we got some hits back here. That's some hits. Um, so But remember, if you if there's no demand, or if there's little demand for cards of little value, then there's gonna be a little demand for cards of great value. Nobody's gonna care. Nobody, nobody's gonna want them, nobody's gonna care, and uh, oh, nice world sculptor. Nice pathway there, okay. And Charix, okay. Nobody's gonna care. How often do you see people collecting like common things, like common knickknacks? Like, I guess once in a while, but it's it, the the thing about collecting is the hardness of getting, whether it costs a lot of money. Nice heroic intervention, boom. The hardness of, and difficulty of collecting is is what makes the collecting something. Bird Griffin. What do we got? Relic Robber. Yeah. Lotus, okay, Lotus, okay, Ruin. 
Oh, 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 oh. We have a foil fetch. We got a foil fetch. Holy cow, what's this guy doing? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, forest plains fetch. That's a pull. So I think we're I think we're doing great on these game piece boxes. Maybe we did have a good conversation about game pieces today. Jungle Hollow, yeah, experimental, salvo, spiteful, simi, incinerator. We've got two expeditions in the box toppers, two expeditions inside. That feels really good. One of them being foil. Two of them being foil. Feels really good. Rogue. Okay, the call. Good, nice, nice pathway. Boom. Nice pathway on that. Fledgling. And oh, another, path, another pathway. Okay. I love these borderless pathways. They just look too good. Coveted prize. Last pack of this one. Again, what do you think? Are you a game piecer? Are you a collector? Do you want to see a lot of reprints? Do you not want to see a lot of reprints? But I think I mentioned in a previous video that Rudy even said it. That if they wouldn't have, oh nice, have printed so much Ice Age, then there might not have been so much interest in Magic the Gathering, because Ice Age had allowed a lot of people to enter the game. And yeah, it kind of destroyed the set, you know, for eternity. But, you know, m maybe it's okay once in a while to, to print a set like that. You know, maybe that's, maybe that's normal. Um, but, I mean, you don't want to see everything just go crazy high, because you need to let people come in. You don't want things becoming incestuous, where you're buying and selling to the same people over and over. Almost like, oh, Skyclave's nice. Almost like that you buy the stuff that you've already sold back. Like, you don't want that to happen. That's that's not good. Oh, a nice branch. We got so many pathways in this box. This box feels like it was incredible. Beacon of Unity. Like this, this box just felt too good. So let me know what you think. Thanks for tuning in. Check out my site, philosopher.cards. And like I said, I'm gonna start doing some slotting. Um, message me if you're interested, and I, I may start there. I may start one-offs as as folks message and you know decide to do Throne of Eldraine, Blister, Ikoria. Um, blister collector blisters so talk to y'all later